Hello everyone, this is Cassandra from the team of the 20th edition of In the Palace International Short Film Festival. Today I'm here with uh, Etienne Glena, um, director from France, uh, who is taking part uh, uh, at the studio competition section uh, fiction with uh, Charlie. Charlie is a film about uh, grief, about a woman who keeps having dreams about the death of her younger sister, Chupette. One night, Chupette uh, reappears in her dreams to help her sister get over her death. So f before starting the Q&A, let's watch the trailer. C'était le dernier jour des vacances. J'étais en haut de cette falaise, incapable de bouger, en train de sécher lentement. Salut Charlie. C'est papa à Paris. On est allé au cimetière ce matin. On aurait aimé que tu sois là. Hello, Etienne. Hello. Thank you for being here, first of all. Well, thank you for having me here. <laughs> thank you. So, this is your uh, first film as a director. Yes. So, first of all, I'd like to ask you what are the challenges that you had to face making this movie? Challenges? Um, I think the, the most challenging thing was um, the communication. I think with the, the DP that I had, which it was her first movie as well as a DP. So we both were kind of uh, stressed out of what we were doing, not really sure about what was happening. So, and the stress, I mean, how we, how we experienced stress, both, uh, kind of was the same kind of blockage. Because we were speaking very well before, and when, when the, the it started to get real, like when we started preparation and on the set, it was, um, uh, we started to kind of have had a hard time to communicate because we weren't sure of our ideas and what we wanted to do really. So there was, there was this, yeah, this hard communication. We were both in the same state of, of um, yeah, of uh, miscommunication, I think. That was the hardest thing, just communication with the team. And, to, and in this yeah. job, the communication is one of the most important things for sure. I do agree, yes. <laughs> so. Uh, one of the most interesting things that I found in this film was the character of the projectionist. Yeah. Basically, um, this film is, is uh, taking part also in an oniric dimension, uh, where uh, the, the oniric dimension is shown as a cinema hall, and the projectionist as the function of uh, taking the sub keeping the subconscious alive. Yeah. So how did you uh, come up with this idea? Um, I Well, it's... I think I come up with this idea with uh, after hearing and living several traumatic moments uh, related to death and um, and other things, um, and and having a little study and reading of uh, psychoanalysis and um, and having uh, started one as well, um, I I kind of was interested in that sort of. Um, yeah, circularity of a con sub the subconscious mind when, when traumas happen, how you cannot like exit, and how I uh, I was explained that when you have a trauma, it's uh, too it's too too much for the brain to comprehend, so it kind of stays up there and never really goes into the memory part of the of the brain. It just stays up and uh, as an emotion, and whenever there's a a certain uh, thing that happens, it kind of brings back the, the, the emotion as it was at the time of the trauma. So it's, it's this kind of uh, state of, it's, it's, it's always there and it never really, you never really make your peace with it. Yeah, so. It is like uh, the time that never passed for you. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, the character of Chupet was uh, pretty strong, not only as a, um, as a person, but uh, as a character as it was uh, written. So yeah. how did you create her? I created her from uh, the relationship, actually, of uh, in between my um, ex-girlfriend and her sister, because they had this sort of different relation to how to live life. This sort of you had this. Uh, my ex-girlfriend was more of a thinker and 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 um, and uh, more logical. Hmm? More logical. More logical. More. Uh, you know, into uh, spirituality and, and, over, and maybe overthinking things when, when as her sister was more into this lively, spontaneous uh, state. With, and, it was, and this was this sort of, sometimes it's jealousy that can appear on uh, how someone wants to live their life fully but are stopped by their thoughts, which I have also. With, and, and, uh, I mean, there's, there's always this kind of relation in between people where you have the thinkers and the doers. And, and, and uh, this character was created from this uh, younger sister. It was very lively, but that put herself sometimes in danger. It's true also because uh, in, the, in the film we can see also that, uh, of course, there is a lot of love from the part of Charlie, but we can also perceive a sort of anger towards her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this kind of jealousy that, it, that you had, can have, exactly. And um, also, the film is enriched by the animation of uh, Bryce Vincent. And uh, how was working with him, and uh, how did you put together your ideas? The animation? The, the, I mean, uh, Bryce Vincent was uh, the one who made the uh, window yeah, thing? Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, that was, that was, <laughs> that was kind of hard, because he wasn't in the city. And... Uh, He's, uh, he's a friend I made in, uh, in the university where I was. And he's a bit of a, um, of a night person. So, and he was away, so we, we, we kind of did it distance on the phone. And it was uh, actually, I mean, this guy is, is, is funny, but a bit weird. He always makes uh, movies about vampires and stuff. So he's, he's living night. So we had to make phone calls at the middle of the night. So I had to put an alarm at 3 or 4 a.m. so I could get in touch with him. And, and, we, and we worked from like 4 to 7, because he, that's the only time he was awake. And, um, and so it was, uh, it, was, it was a little bit difficult. It kind of it took time, because we were, we're all doing things around. And since nothing, I mean, it's, since it's, uh, you're not paid, you kind of you know, put your work before. And um, so it was, it was a bit long, but it was, it, was, it was cool to work with him. It was, um, it was funny to do work at night, because you're kind of in this state of, what am I doing? Is this a dream? Many ideas come up uh, tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, and I would wake up in the middle of a dream and then start a conversation about making uh, the sea through a window. So it was kind of, hey, it was kind of a dreamy, dreamy relation of, uh, of work, yeah. Now I would like to ask you something about uh, you, more in uh, specific. Uh, you said in your biography that your life uh, changed a lot after you moved to Paris. In fact, uh, you were born in the southern part of France, then yeah. you moved to Paris, and you said that uh, everything started to change. How so? Um, well, this, yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, raised in the countryside, so in the middle of the forest. I mean, <laughs> not like in a, in a cave or something, but <laughs> in a house in the middle of the forest. But with this, this arriving in Paris, is, it, I think it's, it's related to, I think, my relation to sound and sound design and like how you, you lived in this quiet place and arrive in this crazy, you know, noisy, noisy. Uh, place and this... As a way of, I think it's just that when you live in the, when you have the countryside, there's something about Paris, especially. It's just in the city, there's no, there's no, I mean, in Paris, you don't have the sea, you don't have the mountain, you don't see the stars, and uh, you never really look up at the sky because you're in this, you know, so much light you cannot building. even so, see. It. There's something about your mind changes when you forget that there's uh, infinity. Because I, f I feel like the horizon is the representation of infinity, and 
And in Paris, you don't have this horizon. You just see like the buildings, the people, and and it, it's always stuck. So that's I think that's something in the city that brings. Um, the individual to being more self-centered because you don't have you don't you're not reminded that you're small, and the city you're always bigger than what you actually are. When you're in front of the sea, you're, remind, you're reminded of death. You're reminded of how beautiful and and and, and small you know life is. So there's this this danger of uh, forgetting that you are nothing, which is not a bad thing, which is a you know. So, That's pretty interesting. Living myself as well in a big city, I kind of relate to that as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's interesting. And um, you also studied music and theater. Yes. So how how this uh, helped you in uh, your career as a filmmaker as well? Um, well, I I, I was uh, I studied uh, yeah through music and uh, the drums. Uh, so I. I made um, little bands of uh, rock and metal and whatever. And uh, I only started uh, being into cinema later. At first was music, but I was, I was, I, I wanted to, I, I work in sound, really. So I, the music, I mean, it, it all kind of made, it's like uh, what uh, other people were saying about having different, you know, things, music, theater, cinema. And, and I've always thought that uh, you could do everything. And, um, and so I started off with music, and, and then I did theater classes in high school. And, and I don't know, music and theater kind of melted into this, this need of cinema and, this, and this, uh, this need of rhythm, but I'm, I'm more of a sound and music kind of person. So, so it all kind of... I gotta say I'm a little lost about you know, what, uh, what I should or could be. So I'm kind of, I've always had this reflection, that's why I've done many things, but just not in, in like, only a little, you know. You always do like a little music, and a little theater, and a little cinema. And so you're never, you know, getting to the, you never become, you know, fully. But it makes sense also because uh, cinema is the kind of art where you can find uh, a connection between yeah. all arts, so you can really... Yeah, I mean, it helped a lot. It <laughs> helped a lot to do music because uh, I've always written scripts and in, in the scripts it's... I always emphasize the sound. I always explain the sound, less the image. It's always very, very uh, precise on the sound. Uh, and I always have this, this idea of uh, how it's going to be orchestrated in the editing, and the rest is kind of blurry to me, so it's kind of, uh, it, kind of it kind of helped. And having done theater, of course, you've, I mean, I've, I've acted in uh, <clears throat> several short movies when I was younger, and uh, doing that helps you talk with the actors, because you know what, you know what happens on set, the ego, the, 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 when you're not confident, when you have to reassure actors on how, they're doing good, and um, and having been one, you know how to talk to them, how to take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> and what about your next project? Do you have something in mind already? Yeah, I'm um, <clears throat> I'm writing uh, an next short about something completely different. But um, I'm, I'm I'm as of now I'm working more in uh, music for film because I'm I've. I've got several projects of uh, movies where I do the uh, the music, so I'm I'm kind of writing script, but I'm I'm actually working right now on more you know uh, composing music. Maybe we will music. see some of them in the next editions. Well, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> do we have any questions from the audience? No. Okay. So thank you for being here. It was a thank pleasure, you. and uh, congratulations for your film. Thank you. And thank you all for watching.